Good morning. We have a full service today. There's lots going on today, so welcome this morning. We're glad you're here. Welcome all of you and those watching on the live feed, and hopefully that feed is working. Last week we had some problems with it, but the announcements this morning, if you'll take a look at your announcements in the bulletin, I won't read all of them, but I'll make mention of a few. We are having communion today. It is Communion Sunday. It's the first Sunday in Advent. Exciting. Love the Advent season. Uh, all who truly... All who truly believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, who are truly repentant and who truly believe that Christ is present in the bread and wine, may commune with us today. We ask that you would sign the communion register out in the narthex there. Also, if you would note here that uh, Juanita Geiken had, uh, well, they, they, she didn't fall, but she had an injury to her back and, and she was having pain and she couldn't get out of bed. So they took her into the hospital and had an x-ray done, and they found that she had a fracture in her spine, uh, in her backbone, and so in her lower back. And so she's not able to walk just yet. Uh, she's in great spirits, and she's got on medication uh, to, for that. So, But uh, she was in the hospital in Hoopston. They have now moved her to Heartland in Paxton in room 117. So if any of you want to send her a Get Well card or... Uh, visit her or anything like that to uh, boost her spirits. That would be greatly appreciated, but you know where she's located at now. Make note of all of the comings and goings coming up here in the next uh, weeks to come. Uh, make mention today that there is junior youth group, which meets at 6. That's for six, uh, fourth grade through 6th grade. And then uh, Fly will meet at 6.30. And uh, keep in mind the Advent services that are coming up in Wednesdays. Um, now... Now, i got to remember this. Okay, so your, your group is meeting on the 9th, on the 9th in, Danville. in Danville at the mall at 12, at 12 o'clock noon. I should say not, six, not 12 a.m., right? 12, yeah. so, okay, so, so at noon. And then in Champaign on the, on, the, on the 16th, and that's in the mall as well at noon. Okay, in the food court. So if you want to, uh, to see some of uh, that group who is singing there, so keep that in mind. Are there any other announcements that need to be made that I haven't made yet? Anybody bold enough to raise their hand and actually say anything? All right. Otherwise, we just skip right on over it. All right, I'm going to call, uh, well, we'll begin the service this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we're going to do our call to worship this morning, which is Psalm 24, and it's the responsive reading, so if you would turn to page 121, we'll read responsively. It's Psalm 24, the congregation will be, read the bold print. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up ancient doors. The King of glory may come in. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. I'll call on Dorothy and Weston at this time for the lighting and reading of the first Advent candle. This is the first candle of hope. Advent wreaths are circular, representing God's inf infinite love and are made of evergreen leaves, which represent the hope of eternal life brought by Jesus Christ. With the Advent wreath are candles which represent the four weeks of Advent season, as well as the light of God coming into the world through the birth of Jesus Christ. This week, the first candle sp 
specifically symbolizes hope. Behold uh, is 42, 1 through 3, 11, verse 10, and Matthew 12, 21. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit un upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed will not, he will not break, and he, a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. Then in that day the nations will resort to the root of Jesse, who will stand as a signal for the peoples, and his resting place will be the glorious, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the hope that is found in you and in your coming. You have always followed through on your promises. We are ever grateful for your love and for your faithfulness to us that brings us hope. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dorothy and Weston. Let us sing together our opening hymn then, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number two.
Let us confess our sins with the confession found on page 2 in our hymnal. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Chapter 1, verse 19 tells us, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Psalm 32, 5b tells us, And I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. It is because of promises like this, in the Word of God, from the mouth of God Himself, and because of the completed work of Christ on the cross in your place, I declare to you that your sins have been forgiven. Please be seated. I'll call on Jake at this time for our morning scripture. <coughs> the Old Testament lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 33 verses 14 through 18. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. <coughs> this, is the, this is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. For this is what the Lord says. David will never fail to have a man to sit on the throne of Israel, nor will the Levitical priest ever fail to have a man to stand before me continually to offer burnt offerings, to burn grain offerings, and to present sacrifices. The second Old Testament lesson is also from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. <coughs> the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel at that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. For the least of them to the greatest, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Here ends the lessons. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel text comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 22. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolled it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom from the prison, prisoners and recover of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 
Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began to say, began saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they said? Or they asked? Here ends the gospel lesson. Let us join together now in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on the board or on page 4 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What'd you put in here? Something fa fantastic? Is it a unicorn? No? Yeah, some of our kids are gone. Some other kids are over there. Okay, what do we got? Oh, look at it. It's cute. It's a picture of a pig. Is that, what, is that what you wanted it to be for the pig on here? Oh, the little piglet. Isn't he so cute? Guys, this is what bacon looks like before you cook it. All right, just kidding, just kidding. That's not funny, is it? So, do you think that this pig is cute? Now, it's a little baby piglet, so what happens? How does it, but how does it grow? What, what has to take place? It has to drink its mom's milk, yeah. What happens if it, gets, if it doesn't get taken care of by its mom? What will happen? Yeah, it can die. It's pretty, pretty fat, fragile, right? It has to be taken care of, just like a little baby. Just if we don't take care of the baby, then what will happen? It will die. So it's dependent on its mother for life. So we're kind of like these little piglets. Some of us are cute, like this little piglet, and some of us, well, we're just not like little piglets. But what, what do we need? We need something for us. And I'm a big adult, right? But I'm dependent on something too, and I don't mean my wife's cooking. Right? But I, I'm dependent on something, and if I don't get it, I could die. What is it? What do you think? Faith. That's a good one. Yep, that's part of it. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the? Lord. No, oh my goodness. I thought I've said this so many times. Starts with a W. The Word. The Word. There we go. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word. I need to hear the Word of God so that faith can be kindled within, so that I can be fed by the word, because if I don't get the word, it's just like this baby piglet who doesn't get its milk from its mother. And spiritually, I could die. So it's important that we're getting the word of God, that we're reading, that we're spending time in prayer and being with God, because that's what sustains us. That's what keeps us. So it's important that we do that. So can you, <laughs> I'm telling you, your kid is killing me. He's adorable. All right. So just the other day, you guys, if you guys remember, 
I have to tell this story quick before we pray. So it's, it, it, it's not, it's Jax, right? Jackson? Yeah, okay, so he's over here and he's doing this, right? And they're, they're over there and they're like, no, don't do that. And then he was going like this, right? He, like he's doing right now. It reminded me of a story when Brecken was little, like this age, right? I did this to him when he was up there, just about that same age. And he turned around and was like, pow, 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 and started shooting a congregation. Now, oh, anyway, kids are, kids are great. So just like these little piglets, you too need the word of God so that we can be faith encouraged. So let's, let's pray quick. Ready? Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for faith that is given in your word. Lord, we thank you for belief that can be stirred up within us by your Holy Spirit. But moreover, Lord, we're thankful for the word of God which nourishes us. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would continue to feed us. Keep us close to you. Uh, we can always be sustained by you, Lord, because we know that without you, we're like a little piglet without its mother. We're in danger of being lost and in danger of being killed. Lord, help us, sustain us, and keep us. In your holy name, amen. What were you saying? What about the candle? The candle? We lit it already. Did, is this normally when you guys were lighting the candle? Okay, all right, so norm, what we're going to do from now on is we light it at the beginning of service. We do it as the first thing. Would you like to light it next week? Okay, you can light it next week, all right? Um, who hasn't had the, the bag? You already had the bag. I know, you can't, you can't have it twice yet. So were you the first one to have it twice? Have you had it twice? You've had it three times? Are you sure you've had it three times? How did that happen? Have you had it two times yet? Uh, Here you go. Perfect. Good answer. All right, go, you guys go ahead back to your, head back to your seats and we're going to sing. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I forgot. Have a seat. There's a presentation here. This isn't for, this isn't for everybody, but this is for Hannah. Would you come up here, please? I hear you uh, recited the 23rd Psalm. Well, congratulations, and here's a little token here. You can put it in your Bible to realize that you, that you did that. So that's very good. Congratulations. All right, you guys can have a seat. Let's sing our song before our message today, uh, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number five.
So this is our first uh, message in this series for Advent. There will be uh, one until Christmas. So I think I, I thought at first it was going to be seven, but I think it's more than that because we have two services on, the, on Christmas Eve. So but the series is the red thread of Christ. And the point of that is to find Christ who is woven throughout Scripture. Really all of Scripture from the beginning and the end is about Christ. It's about Christ's love for His people, about Christ and how He re- was meant to redeem His people. And so we're going to find hints and gleamings of Christ throughout the Scripture, and that's the point of, of what we're doing. And today, we're going to find Christ in the garden. The passage of Scripture this morning is from Genesis chapter 3. It's verses 13 through 21, and we will be looking at some of that before uh, 13 too, but we're going to read verses 13 through 21 quickly here. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The woman, to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception, and in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and which you have done and eaten from the tree, of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for all your sake. And in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground from out which you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also, for Adam, a wife, the Lord God made tunics and skin of clothes for them. Let us pray. Lord, we are grateful for this season. We are grateful for your birth. We're grateful for this time to rejoice and to remember the wonderful gift that it is. Lord, I pray that we would, we would continue to see you throughout our life, but also that we would see you deeply in Scripture. Help us to see you here, Lord, for the coming of your sacrifice, for the love that you've shown us. Let us see it here, Lord, so that we might know you more and, and love you dearly, Lord. Be with us now and teach us from your own word, in your holy name. Amen. In, I, I believe that you can see, see Christ in a lot of Scripture all over the place, and especially here in the beginning. Christ is evident in a lot of different places in this passage of Scripture. We, we see in another place in Scripture that Christ is the only mediator between God and man. The only mediator between God and man. And so because of that p- passage of Scripture, there's many people that believe that When an angel of the Lord, or an angel of Yahweh, because that's Lord all uppercase, okay, when that happens, many people believe that that was the pre-incarnated Christ that was coming, because Christ is the mediator between God and man. And so it makes you wonder, you know, when God is walking in the garden, was that the pre-incarnated Christ walking in the garden, or was it the Trinity? We don't know, but that's what some people believe. When we think of this idea of Christ in the garden here, that's not exactly where I'm talking about. In fact, it's not even in in Genesis 3.15 where it's foretelling of the coming of Christ that I want to talk about in the end. As we begin here, we're going to see the three points are the proof, the promise, and the prefigure. You can tell I had to look up a word there to make that work, right? So, the promise, the proof, the prefigure. We're going to look at the proof first as we begin here. And and what I mean by this, the proof, is that God was with them from the beginning. And we have proof of this as we look at the Scripture, and as we look at everything that was said here, take a look in Genesis, if we see in verse chapter 3 and verse 8. This is after they have eaten from the tree in which they were told not to. And it says here, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden 
on the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. As I begin, I was, I was wondering, it's beautiful we see that God has been with them from the beginning. God was with them. The point of, of God creating man was for relationship. We were always meant to be with God. We are meant to be the object of his affection, of his love. It, it, there was never a point when God created us that we weren't supposed to be with him, that we were supposed to be separated from that. Never, that was never supposed to happen. And so here God is, is with them continually as often as it is, and then it's in the middle of the day, in the cool of the day, or, uh, and, and they hear him walking. And I wondered, what did that sound like? What did that sound like? If you guys remember, when, when God came to Elijah, he wasn't in the rushing wind, right? He was in a still, small voice. And so what did it sound like when the grass rustled? Was there a loud sound that said that he was present? It must have not sounded like a deer, right? Because they knew it was God from right from the start. They knew that he was there. So it was distinct. If I were to apply this to my own life and then ask you to apply it to yourself, I would ask you, what does God sound like when he walks with you today? And don't tell me he doesn't, because he does. What does it sound like? Troy, maybe, it, maybe you could tell us what it sounds like when you're in the combine and Christ is with you. You know when he's there. If you're paying attention, if you're listening, you know he's there. Christ in the garden. The red thread of Christ throughout Scripture as we look at this. We know that we were always meant to be with him. And his desire is that we would spend our life devoted to him. That there wouldn't be anything else that we place above him. That doesn't mean you can't love and enjoy a spouse. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to hate your children. But it does mean that God is supposed to be the most important thing. He is supposed to be above everything else. And what that looks like in your life, you have to determine Uh, I think football gets a bad name because it's on Sunday sometimes, right? But I, I think it's fair to say that if you care more about the football game than coming to service on Sunday, there might be a problem. But you could say that about a lot of different things. If you're more worried about playing a video game than you are about coming to church on Sunday or being with God and spending time in His Word, then there might be a problem. I apply these things to my own life, right? I'm not just standing up here pointing like this at you but in my own very life there are things that i know i put sometimes before god we are meant to be with god and to walk with him there's proof there's proof that from the beginning christ was in the garden that he was there and that we were meant to be with him but there's a promise that exists because we jacked it up we messed it up we ate from the tree we have sin now in our life, and something that was there has been broken. A relationship has been torn. Innocence has been trashed. Something needs to happen in order to make us right with God again. And what we find is that God gives out his curses on the serpent, on the woman, and on the man. It says in verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. Recognize that that seed is singular, not plural, not between your seeds and her seeds, but between your seed and her seed. And then it says he, singular, he, referring back to the seed. He shall bruise your head, you shall bruise his heel. Can you imagine 
what it's like to lose the apple of your eye? What's your favorite thing? What's your most prized possession? Weston, he, he got a uh, phone yesterday for his birthday, and so it begins. But I'm sure right now that's his most prized possession. And I'm sure he would be very upset if he lost it. Yesterday, when we were getting the phone, Brecken came along because he wanted to purchase a gift for Weston for his birthday and buy himself something. Mainly it was buy himself something, but then I can do that by using the excuse that I want to buy something for my brother. But meanwhile, while we're buying the phone, he misplaces his wallet. And his wallet, he'd just gotten $30 for cleaning out Tracy's car, so he was ecstatic. But he was even more happy that when he found his wallet to put the $30 in, he forgot there was $30 already in the wallet. So he's got $60. Lee's living high on the hog. He's ready for Walmart. And he misplaces his wallet. And he was scared to death to tell me. So here we are, we're trying to get all this in the middle of the busy Verizon store. If you remember what a mobile store looks like on Christmas time, this is what it is. And he comes up to me and he says, Dad, I misplaced my wallet. And he was tears, tears, frightened, scared that I was going to get mad at him, scared that he had lost the prize to $60. He was broken. As broken as anybody can be, he was broken. God is walking through the garden. He's upset. But I'm sure he was hurt. Because the apple of his eye was going to be torn from him because of sin. We are God's prized possession. We are the apple of his eye. And in a moment, can you imagine what it would have been like when he realized that it was lost? As this promise begins here in verse 15, the promise begins, what's beautiful about this promise is it begins with, it's already over, right? He says, he shall bruise your head. Another verse translation says, he will crush your head. It's done. It's done. It's over before it even started. But you shall bruise his heel. It's going to cost him something, but the victory is already won. And this is what we live in as Christians, my friends. Have we seen the second coming yet? Has the second coming happened? I hope not because I've missed it then. No, it hasn't. But we look forward to it. And yet, in Revelation, it says, I'm the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is coming, presently coming. His foot hasn't stepped down yet, but it's crossing the threshold. And that's the same promise that was given in Genesis. It was going to be some years before this would be fulfilled. Thousands of years before this would be fulfilled. And yet it says here, he shall crush your head. It's over. And even now as Satan wanders around seeking whom he can devour, we know yet that he will be thrown into the lake of fire. If you remember the sermon I gave, a dog on a chain, that's the same thing that I'm talking about now. The promise of Christ coming, the fact that he would come and that he would die, will be fulfilled. And we know it in Scripture because we stand on this side of it. It's beautiful. We get to, to be on this side. Can you imagine being third or fourth generation of Adam's children, wondering, when is it going to happen? When is the serpent finally going to be crushed? It would be hard to stand in it then, wouldn't it? It's a lot easier on this side when we get to look back. And yet, when I talk about Christ being in the garden, this is still yet not my focus. Our last focus is the prefigure. And in the prefigure, what I want you to see is found in verses 
20 and 21. Really in verse 21, but we'll read 20 because it's before. And Adam called his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. There's so much in that one verse. Why did God make them skins of tunic? They were already covered. Wasn't fig, fig leaves enough? I mean, I'm sure they were covered. It wasn't. It wasn't enough. When we try to cover up our sin, when we try to make atonement for the things that we do, we will never get it right. Our fig leaves in our life trying to cover up our trash is not going to work. Christ made a, or God made a promise. And to seal that promise, he had to take innocence. And innocence will always have to be the punishment for the sinful. We see Christ walking maybe in the garden. It's presumed that it was Christ, but it was God more or less. We see him in the garden with man before. We see him loving men then. We see him loving now. So we see him there. And we see the promise of him to come. But even more, he's foreshadowed in this sacrifice. Where the skins were taken from animals to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness. It doesn't matter what animal they came from. What did they do? They didn't deserve to die. Up to this point, sin had not yet entered the world. So it's not as if animal was eating animal and all that stuff, but here it was. These animals paid because Adam and Eve fell. And we see Christ's sacrifice in that. A promise made and sealed with a sacrifice. Adam and Eve could never cover up their sin. I don't know what you got going on in your life. But if you ever think that you can cover up your sin, if you can cover up the things that you've done wrong in your life, that, that living a good life is just enough, And don't we do that sometimes? You know? We do some good deeds. We, we give to the poor. We spend some time. We help out at church, whatever it might be. And then we do something very small. Maybe it doesn't seem like anything, but, but you know, we throw away, I don't know, throw some trash out the window, right? And isn't it easy to think, oh, well, that's nothing. Throw a little trash out the window. What big is that? It's easy for us to justify things that we know we shouldn't do because we think we've done enough good. Ah, they're fig leaves. Dirty rags. We don't have the ability to do enough good to cover up the wrong in which is in our life. So we see here that there's a reason Christ had to come. This Advent season, as we rejoice, as we find joy, we find it because Christ came. Because all of our fig leaves that are trying to cover up stuff, it's just not going to work. And there was a promise that was made that I wouldn't, I wouldn't need to try to cover up my sin with something that doesn't work. Because there's something that does work. And that's Christ. I don't have to wonder if I'll ever be forgiven. I don't have to wonder that if I stand at the gates of heaven, will God let me in or not? Will I be good enough? Does God care for me or not? These are not things I need to worry about. These are not things that I have to wonder about because Scripture is clear. He is victorious. He's always victorious. Christ himself won the battle against sin, death, and the devil so that you don't have to get in the ring and fight that battle. 
If you don't know what it means to believe, if you're not sure what it means to have faith, pray and ask Christ to show it to you. But if you do know, which I'm sure everyone in here does, remember that it's every single day we have to live this. A daily repentance, a life that is continually led at being trusting in Christ to lead and guide you. And it's hard to do that. It's easy to stand up here and tell you, you need to be faithful to God. You need to rest in His promises. You can't do it on your own. Those are, those are easy things to say. But when it gets to actually living that, it's a lot different. Let these words not just be Sunday morning. Let the idea knowing that Christ is with you not just be Sunday morning. It's every day. Let us, let us end with prayer. Lord, in our desperate hour, in our darkest need, in the valley of the shadow of death, we are able to fear no evil. Not because we are strong and mighty, but because you are strong and mighty. Not because we have all the answers and are able to save ourselves, but for the fact that we don't have to save ourselves because you, you have accomplished the victory. A tiny little baby who needed his mother's milk. You, Lord, you were a little piglet one time. And you had to be sustained by the creation that you created. We are grateful for you, your humility. We are grateful that you humbled yourself. We're thankful for your coming, Lord. Keep reminding us of the beauty of your cross, of your life, death, and resurrection this Advent season. In your holy name, amen. Let's sing our next hymn here. Hymn number 404, And Can It Be That I Should Gain?
Please rise. the ways you work. Pray that we would keep our eyes fixed on the cross and open so that we might hear you and see you as you walk in our life today. We thank you for the different ways that you give us that we might serve you. We ask that you would continue to use us as a congregation, Lord, to be your hands and your feet and to love others. We ask that you would be with those who are sick and ailing, Lord, those who could not be here with us this morning, be with those members who are in behold as well. Pray that their ministry would be blessing and glorifying to you, Lord. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would be here throughout this Advent season with our congregation and help us to, to focus on you, Lord, and to be grateful for the many blessings that we have. We will end with the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had eaten and he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The table has been prepared. The ushers will call you forward. Please be seated.
Welcome to the Lord's table. Body of Christ given for you. 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 Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though you're... in the darkness we lie and we do not live by the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin it is Christ who has now bestowed upon you his holy body and blood whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins may he preserve you in the true faith and strengthen you under everlasting life peace be with you amen
it's not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty ways of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but it's with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. It is Christ who has now bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all of your sins. May he strengthen you and preserve you unto everlasting life and the true faith. God be with you and peace. Amen. as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inequity. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great has the love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed the transgression from us. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who has now bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins. May he strengthen and preserve you under the true faith and everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen.
devil, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is now bestowed upon you, his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins. May he strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life and the true faith. Peace be with you. Amen. Please rise. Receive now the benediction. It comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Sing together our closing song, number 34, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. <laughs> 